the Buddha doesn't draw a sharp line between mindfulness practice and concentration practice. When he gives his instructions for breath meditation, the 16 steps, he says that they fulfill the four foundations of mindfulness, or establishings of mindfulness, which are right mindfulness. And they also fulfill the, the conditions for right concentration, the four jhanas. There's a passage in the canon that says that the nimitta, or the theme of right concentration, is the four establishings of mindfulness. So you practice the two together. Basically, when you get the mind really solid with its foundation, or its frame of reference, that's how you get it into concentration. Sort of the beginning steps in breath meditation. The first two, the Buddha says, simply you discern when the breath is long and when the breath is short. Now, as you're discerning these things, you can also decide which feels more comfortable. You can add other variations. Deep, shallow, heavy, light, fast, slow. So discern what kind of breathing feels good right now. The remaining steps in breath meditation, the Buddha calls trainings, which you train yourself to breathe in a certain way, or to focus on certain things as you're breathing in, breathing out. And the very first training is to be sensitive to the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out. This fits in with the Buddha's images for getting the mind into the right concentration. They're all images of expansive awareness. So you're not just focused on one point. You may have one point more prominent than the others in the body. But you want to breathe in and out in a way that gives rise to ease, gives rise to a sense of fullness. And then the Buddha says you allow that to permeate through the entire body. The image he gives is of a bathman. Back in those days they didn't have bars of soap. They had a bath powder that they would mix with water until they made a kind of dough that you would rub over your skin. And he says that the skilled bathman mixes the water with the dough. So it permeates all the, the bath powder, so there's nothing dry, and at the same time there's no extra water leaking out. Of these various images for right concentration, this is the one that has a conscious agent that is doing things in the same way as you're aware of the whole body and thinking of that sense of ease flowing through the body. You may find that there are parts of the body that are tense, tight, resistant. So you think of the breath working through those patterns of tension and dissolving them away. You'll also notice that as we go through the different images that the Buddha gives for the different states of concentration, water stands for pleasure, movement stands for rapture a sense of refreshment that flows through the body. So in the second image, for the second jhana, there's no conscious agent now. It's just simply a spring at the base of a lake with cool water coming out of the spring and feeding the lake. And the rain keeps coming so the spring doesn't run dry. And the cool water simply is allowed to flow through the lake. There's nothing resisting it. At this point, you've worked through those patterns of tension in the body. So now as you breathe in, breathe out, the sense of ease flows naturally throughout the body. An image for the third jhana it says it's like a lake where the waters are still. And the lotus is growing in the lake. And 
and some of the lotuses are totally immersed in the lake. So that the water of the lake permeates all the lotuses from the tips of their flowers down to the tips of their roots. This is the image for the third jhana, or third level of right concentration, where there's a sense of stillness in the body. The body feels refreshed, the mind feels equanimous. If there is that full sense of refreshment, ease, And then finally with the fourth jhana, the images of a man sitting still with a white cloth that covers his entire body. This is to represent a sense of bright awareness filling the whole body. The breath grows very quiet, so quiet that it seems to stop. But the oxygen needs of the body are such that you don't feel the need to breathe. At this point, all of the breath channels in the body are so connected that there's no sense of lack anywhere, but you're very still. This is how you get the mind into right concentration. And you do it through being mindful. The Buddha says you keep the body in mind, or the body in its, of itself in mind. In this case, you take the breath as your object. You're ardent, alert, and mindful. Mindful means you keep your theme in mind. Alert means that you're watching what you're doing and the results that you're getting. And ardency means you try to be mindful and alert in a skillful way. In other words, if the mind wanders off, you bring it right back. The more quickly you can bring it back, the better. And it's wise when you bring it back to reward it so that it will be happy to come back. Reward it with a breath that feels really good inside. These are the qualities you develop in mindfulness. At the same time, you're focused on one object, but if any thoughts related to the world come up, you just put them aside. At the moment, it's just you with a breath. And these qualities of mindfulness, alertness, and ardency turn into the factors for right concentration. Mindfulness turns into directed thought as you keep thinking about the breath. And your ardency combined with your alertness turn into evaluation as you figure out what kind of breathing feels right and how you can take that sense of ease and pleasure, refreshment that come from comfortable breathing, and how you can spread it around the body. And the fact that you're really sticking with this, that's singleness of object. It's single both in the sense that it's the one thing that you're focused on, and it's also the one thing that fills your awareness. Breath fills the whole body. Now the factors for the first jhana, those are the causes. The results are that feeling of refreshment or rapture. a sense of fullness in the body, and then there's pleasure. Everything seems at ease. So these are the qualities of mind you're trying to develop. It all begins with that training and being aware of the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out, and then making it a pleasant experience. The fourth step in the breath meditation, the Buddha says, once you're aware of the whole body, you try to calm the, the sensation of the breath. And as I said earlier, it can get so calm that it get, you reach the point where you don't feel like you're breathing at all. Now, you don't force that. You don't try to suppress the breath. Just think of the breath energy as connecting in the body and keeping your mind still. 
because the mind is still, uses less oxygen, and need to breathe grows milder and milder. So this is how you practice right mindfulness and right concentration together. When they work together in this way, they provide the ideal basis for developing discernment into that big issue in the mind, which is why the mind causes itself unnecessary suffering, unnecessary stress. Because your mind is really still like this, you can see the subtle movements of the mind. And because this awareness is all around, you see where thoughts come from, no matter which direction they're coming from, where they appear in the mind. The Buddha himself was said to have what's called an all-around eye. It's when your awareness is all around like this that there are no blind spots. If it's restricted to one point, there are huge blind spots in the mind. Or greed, aversion, delusion, and all the other things that cause trouble in the mind can hide out. But when your awareness is all around like this, they have no place to hide. So do your best to develop this all-around awareness. It will have a tendency to shrink, especially on the out-breath. But if you consciously learn how to keep expanding, expanding, expanding it, it becomes more and more your default mode of awareness. It gives you a good foundation, not only as you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but also as you go through the day. You can go through the day more grounded, with your calm center inside and your ability to see things happening in the mind, no matter which direction they come from. It's probably what the Buddha put it first among the trainings that you do in breath meditation because it's basic to everything else.